All right, guys, today we are doing a seven-round Minnesota Vikings mock draft. Yes, I am a Packer fan, but um, I'm taking off my, my fan hat today, and I'm, my goal is to make the Vikings the winners of the NFC North. I think you guys got a real good chance of just having a bounce back, just getting guys like Daniil Hunter and uh, and um, Michael Pierce back is going to help you tremendously if you keep that off the offense stoked up. Um some real, real high-end potential for the Vikings already. And I've got some really good news. Not only do you have a ton of picks um, already in the upcoming draft, but this, this mock right here is based off of my first-round mock. You can watch it here if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and, and what that is is a continuation of that mock draft. And in that mock draft, I did a trade. We traded back two spots, still got the guy we wanted, and got an additional fourth-round pick. So we now have 11 picks in this mock. I'll be honest, I don't like that. Um, because what I end up doing is getting two of this position and two of that position and start drafting other positions that I, you know, fans are probably going to say, we don't need that, you're an idiot. Well, we just have so many picks. I, don't, I, I can't just keep picking the same position a hundred times because it's the only thing we need. So, so we're gonna get stacked up here. Um, you know, obviously not everything is the biggest need in the world, but hey, we just have a ton of picks. So if you don't like a pick, just hang in there. Uh, we got a bunch coming. But if again, if you haven't seen that trade or how we got to this point, that's how we got there. Go check out that video. Uh, otherwise, let's let's just get started. With the 16th pick in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings, who accepted a trade from the Patriots and moved back two spots, select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. This is becoming a pretty, you know, usually the first, like, three picks are set in stone. The interesting thing is there's, like, one or two or three teams that are kind of in the middle that still always end up picking the same guy every single time, and Wyatt Davis to the Vikings is one of them. Um... I do think it's less dire than it has been in the past. The offensive line has been improving. So it's not like it used to be where it's like, this is the worst offensive line in football. This is a must. I don't know if it's a must, but when you got Wyatt Davis sitting here, let's just do it, man. I mean, what what, what are we overthinking this for? So uh, Wyatt Davis, probably the best consensus interior offensive lineman right now. You did that last time with Garrett Bradbury. Um, he got off to a rough start, but I, I do think he's the right guy, and you're, you're starting to see the benefit of that already. The athleticism and whatnot is incredible. So we're going to do it again with Wyatt Davis. We're going to get that run game even better. We're going to protect the quarterback, keep the offense stoked up, et cetera, et cetera, because we don't want that to decline as we get this defense going again. we got to keep that stoked up. So Wyatt Davis, Ohio State to the Vikings. With the 79th pick in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Jalen Phillips, edge rusher, Miami. So Gregory Rousseau gets all the love, but this guy is an absolute freak right now. Six foot five, 266 pounds, um, dominant as a run defender. Uh, actually, has been solid in coverage, which you guys aren't going to utilize. But just just kind of showing the. The, the versatility of the guy. But on top of that, he's got 42 pressures on 286 attempts, which is about 15%, which is really high. He's only got nine sacks, which, I mean, isn't actually that bad, but it doesn't really pop off the way that it should when you look at the amount of pressures the guy has. He has 29 hurries, four hits, nine sacks, 42 total pressures on only 286 attempts. Um, it is a massive breakout year for him. He's always a decent pass rusher. He became a very good pass rusher. He went from being a subpar run defender to a really good run defender, really good tackler. And again, even the couple times he dropped him into coverage, he has a 78 overall grade. Um, he actually has a pick. He's got a 79.2 passer rating when targeted. Again, the Vikings are never going to use him that way, but I, I just want to show you like how much of a breakout he's had. He may even you know, get drafted higher than the third round, but at this point in time, that's where people are seeing him. And, um, you know, again, outside of Daniil Hunter, who's a great pass rusher, I'd like to get that, that compliment on the other side, and we're going to take a swing at Jalen Phillips to get there. With the 82nd pick in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select... Brenton Cox, defensive tackle, Florida. Now, again, this is one of those where you look at it and say, that's not what we need, blah, 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 whatever. It's kind of a future pick, a little bit. I mean, I do want the defensive line to get better. That When, when that's going at 100%, that's when the Vikings are at their best, when that defensive line is unstoppable. Um, we've got Michael Pierce. He's getting a little bit up in age. He's going to be around for a while, but... Um, in, you know, there's no guarantee he's coming back and is going to be as dominant as he was two years ago with the Baltimore Ravens because last year was a little bit of a down year. He took this year off. It's a little bit iffy. Um, on top of that, we got guys like Holmes, uh, Stefan, Mata'afa, uh, 
those guys are in the final year of their deals. Jaleel may not be back in 2021. So it's also about losing guys in the near future. So we want better talent. We need more bodies. It does kind of make sense, even though it may not be at the forefront of Vikings fans' minds. So Brenton Cox with the 82nd pick. With the 110th pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Javante Williams, running back, North Carolina. Now, this is probably one that Vikings fans are going to flip out about, but the fact of the matter is this is not a knock on Cooks as a runner. Obviously, we just paid him. He's going to be our guy. This is, however, a knock on his ability to stay healthy. Um, I don't really see that getting much better. I do see that continuing, and the fact of the matter is we've got guys like Abdullah and Boone who are probably leaving, meaning when Cooks goes down, it's Madison and then nobody. So maybe we don't have to do it in the fourth round, but just so you know, we've got picks 110, 111, 112, 124, 144, 146. So it's, it's all Vikings down the line here in the fourth and fifth rounds. Um, and so, again, we've got a lot of picks in this range. The highest up right now is Javante Williams. And again, we've got the next two picks in a row. So we're just going to take the top guy here. Um, and I do think it's a need. I do think we have to get another body in here. I'm not taking him in the first round or the second round. It's the fourth round. He's also a very good running back. 220 pounds. He's built like a brick house. 7.4 uh, yards per carry this season. Um, he's got 75 avoided tackles this season. Uh, only one fumble, 65 yards was his longest. That was this past week against Miami. Um, if you want to check out some real good games uh, for him, check out his game against NC State. 19 carries, 160 yards, 8.4 yards per attempt is one good one uh, against Duke, against Miami, against Virginia Tech. Um, if you want to balance it out with a bad game, maybe check out Notre Dame. Wasn't his best ever, 2.5 yards per attempt. But the point is, very good runner, 5'10", 220 pounds. He's a hammer, and I think he's going to be just another good running back. I mean, that's just kind of what you do. You, you have a stable of backs. You rotate out your backs, and, and especially when you've got an injury-prone starter, you got to have a, a decent stable. So Javante Williams to the Vikings. With the 111th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Josh Ball, offensive tackle, Marshall. Again, I know... This is not at the forefront of everybody's mind. We we may not need him if we assume Ezra Cleveland comes in and is an absolute stud. But even so, we're going to need some depth behind them because we don't have anybody. And also, I don't know Ezra is going to come in and be a dominant tackle. I don't know that. So I want to make sure that we keep this offensive line going in the right direction, not the wrong direction as guys start to leave. So we're going to add in another body, Josh Ball, who's going to come in and compete possibly be a starter at some point if not hopefully a quality backup with the 112th pick in the 2021 nfl draft the minnesota vikings select ronnie perkins edge rusher oklahoma again one of the issues with having so many picks is that i can't just do needs every single time um and so i do think edge is incredibly important we did get jalen phillips we're getting another one it's that simple i mean it, you, you know the adage you can never have too many pass rushers i technically don't agree with that there are there is a number that is too many but um we don't have that number and having three is not going to be the end of the world so we're, we're going to take again multiple swings at this we're going to make sure we get it we're going to make sure the offensive line is right we're going to make sure we have a good defensive line we've now added two edge rushers and a defensive tackle uh, we've got a running back to make sure that that run game stays stoked up that's a critical part part of what we do we're, we're, we're not just going for the deficiencies we're making sure that our strengths stay strong and that's that's as important as anything else so Ronnie Perkins off the edge to the Vikings with the 124th pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL draft the Minnesota Vikings select Deontay Brown offensive guard Alabama so Big Alabama boy, not the greatest run blocker in the history of the universe, but he's going to keep our corner quarterback upright. Again, it's it's more competition. We've got a bunch of guys. We've got the guys that we already have on staff. We've got Wyatt Davis. We've got Deontay Brown. Again, we're going to make sure when we have this many picks that we get things right. We've also got free agency to address things. And I and and I, I I'm serious. I genuinely believe. Packer fan and all, the Vikings are right there, right? It, a little bit more consistency, a little bit more back to what we do, um, and, and especially in the trenches, right? The defensive trenches are important, but so are the offensive trenches. And, and if you can be that team that wins on both sides of the trenches and just be a violent team that controls the ball and attacks the offense, 
I mean, just it's it's going to be, and, and you've got all the components, right? You've got the right system, you got the right coaches, you got the right running back. I genuinely believe you have the right quarterback. You've got the best wide receiver duo in football. We just got to get those couple things. An offensive line, we got to get right. And again, we're taking a second swing at guard. We're going to get this right. With the 144th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Josh Joby, cornerback, Alabama. I'm kind of iffy on this one. Um, there are several teams where I've, I've had the same kind of dilemma where the quality of play is not where we want it to be, but you don't want to overinvest because we already have young talent and, and early round talent that we genuinely believe will and kind of better get better, right? So, you know, again, if I, if I take a cornerback in the first round, you end up potentially wasting a pick because now we've got quality early round talent sitting on the bench. But again, it's still not up to snuff, and I don't want to just completely abandon the position and assume that guys are going to get better. So Joby's going to come in. He's going to compete a little bit. There's there's no rule that says a fifth-round pick can't play over a first-round pick or, or a second-round pick or third-round pick or whoever it is that's not up to standards. So, um, again, it's, it's depth, it's talent, and, and it's, it's like I've been saying. We're going to keep swinging at this until we get it right. And I have to assume in 2021, with now Joby on there, as well as a bunch of guys going into their second round, uh, second year, I have a feeling it's going to be a much better cornerback group. With the 146th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Dante Stills, defensive tackle, West Virginia. I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again, but basically as far as I can see it, we've got one guy on the defensive line prior to this draft that we believed would be a good football player that is kind of getting up in age a little bit. Again, we don't know for sure. What was it, 2018 was the last time? Twenty, Yeah, 2018 was the last time he had a really good season with the Baltimore Ravens. So again, we, we went out and got Brenton Cox in the third round. That's great, but especially defensive tackle. You, you, you need multiple big body guys just to rotate out, just to keep fresh. And the more of those guys we can have, the better off. Dante Stills is kind of an interesting guy because he's only 280 pounds but he's actually a dominant run defender that really struggles as a pass rusher, kind of similar to what the Packers have with Kingsley Kiki. When you look at a trimmed up defensive tackle, you assume he's just a pass rusher that you take off the field on third down, but that's not necessarily the case. And the, and the cool thing is the upside with guys like that. If you get a smaller guy that can play the run real well, but also has the you know nimbleness because he's a smaller guy, if you can coach him up a little bit to have that upside potential as a pass rusher, it's, it's a guy that you want to invest in. And again, because we don't, have a, a need for a guy to start every single snap we have some time to coach him up a little bit so Dante Stills West Virginia to the Vikings with the 175th pick in the sixth round of the 2021 NFL draft the Minnesota Vikings select Divine Diablo safety Virginia Tech first of all you're welcome because his name is Diablo and that's a freaking awesome name for any football player to have. But um, the, the general thought process here was, and again, we're getting into the later rounds, so we're talking kind of, uh, you know, long shots slash backup slash depth, whatever. But we've got great safeties. There's no question about that, but they are getting a little bit older. I think the Vikings, although you did lose your defensive backs coach to the Packers, um, who did a great job coaching up these safeties, um, the Vikings have always done a great job of whenever a guy just sets foot on the, on the field, as a safety, he's just a great safety. It's just, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. So he's going to have a great opportunity to learn from some real good safety, some real good coaches, and to be coached up a little bit. And again, this is not a 2021 play. This is a depth slash future investment uh, in Divine Diablo. Divine Divine, Di the spelling is all messed up, but Divine Diablo is his name. That's kind of crazy. Anyways, safety Virginia Tech to the Vikings. Finally, with the 206th pick in the seventh round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Tanner Morgan, quarterback, Minnesota. Because why not end it with a quarterback out of Minnesota? Um, I mean, the odds of him starting over Kirk Cousins are very low, but we also got Sean Mannion, who is a free agent right now. I don't really see any reason to hang on to, to any of these guys. So he's going to compete as a backup. Um I don't, I don't hate the guy. I mean, 2019 was a, was a pretty big year for him. He kind of broke out a little bit and then regressed a little bit more in 2020. He's got the Daniel Jones syndrome of fumbles. He's got three this year. He had eight in 2019 and six in 2018. I don't know what the deal is there, but six foot two, 215 pounds, um, thrown for 1,300 yards this season, seven touchdowns, five interceptions is not great. So again, he's, he's going to be 
He's going to be a backup. That's what we got in the seventh round. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to say I got you a quarterback that's going to start in the future. We, we didn't. Um, but, again, I, 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 I like Kirk Cousins. I think he's doing a good job. I think he can be the guy. He's obviously not perfect. But, um, man, some of those throws, maybe he just plays well against the Packers. I don't know. But some of those things, are they keep me up at night. But uh, I got you a backup quarterback in the seventh round, so you're welcome. Well, that's going to do it. That is a seven-round mock draft for the Minnesota Vikings. I would love it if you would like the video and then leave me a little comment. Let me know what I missed on, some of the things that I overlooked. Um, I am in the division generally, but I still don't know the Vikings as well as a lot of you guys who uh, live and breathe the Minnesota Vikings. So I would love any and all feedback. It's going to help me with my first-round mock drafts as well as the next time I do a seven-round mock for the Vikings. So I would love that. Uh, also, if you would like to support the channel, you can do so with the memberships I now have. So please click on that. There's a little video kind of explaining all that. I don't want to do it all here. Otherwise, subscribe, hit the little bell notification so you don't miss any other videos, and I'll catch you next time.